If we can um, call roll. Thank you, Commissioner Velasco. Commissioner Grennan? Here. Commissioner Burtonette? Aye. Commissioner Velasco? Here. Commissioner Henderson? Here. Commissioner Spry? Here. Thank you. Okay. And if everybody's had a chance to look at the minutes of October 11, 2016, if anybody has any comments or questions or changes, if not, I'll take a motion to approve. So moved. Can I get a second? Second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I, I will just have to abstain since I wasn't here. Thank you. So we'll go ahead and approve those minutes. And we'll go ahead and we have one public comment request to speak. Cynthia Gudino. Hello, commissioners. My name is Cynthia Gudino. I'm here to talk about... Uh, well, I'm here to talk about the light situation. <laughs> I've been talking to uh, Alex and Melissa Guerrero and Jim, of course, and they've been really uh, uh, great with getting me information on the part that's broken out at the Miami field for the lights that can't be used right now because they need that part. Um, but I'm here to see if we can actually, there's a lot of parents uh, that are out there with their kids and they're actually seeing if there's uh, authorization in the meantime where we can actually bring in portable lights or if the city actually owns portable lights that can actually provide to us um, they're willing to rent them out they're willing to pay whatever it has you know whatever we need to pay uh, to get lights i mean right now with daylight savings time it's getting darker sooner if you actually drive by Miami park around six if you get closer to the field you're going to see that the entire field is full of kids trying to practice in the middle of the night so they're just requesting an authorization to use portable lights in the meantime. The part was in back order, and finally they're gonna be shipping it out on the 11th of November. That was per Melissa Guerrero, the supervisor for the facilities. And so if it gets shipped out on the 11th, that means probably they won't get it until next week. And then whenever Public Works can actually get to it, that'll be another week. So that's where we are actually requesting the portable lights or the other thing is they're wanting to use I know tennis courts right now they're specifically for tennis and they've been you know very, they've been respectful of that but if we can actually get an authorization to use them at least like indoor soccer they can use um, tennis um, tennis shoes they don't have to use they don't use cleats in that area but if we can at least use it for the kids so they can actually practice in the meantime and uh, also, there's tennis courts at the Miami Field and Atkinson Park as well. So if we can at least do that, just a temporary authorization, that's all we're requesting for now. Thank you. Alex, isn't there already uh, in last year's field use policies, um, kind of like we have at Crossroads, there's designated spaces where people can bring in portable lights? Right, the commission approved fields where lights could be brought in, mm -hmm. and I don't remember them off the top of my head. Jim, do you recall? Uh, couple, but we didn't have an analyst to do with that. Because it has lights. We did not take that in consideration at the time of the so, I mean, on the surface of it, I mean, I, I don't think we have an issue right, with that. If somebody wants to bring in some lights, we just have to, like we done, like we have done at the other fields, is designate where they go and, and how they get them in permit. and out. So, um, uh, do you want to handle that with uh, Cynthia and work with them to get something out there? Okay. So just, Jim will handle that. Just a quick question, yes. Alex. What, what is the arrangement we have on the Crossroads Basin's lights? Is it at their expense? At the it's at expense? their expense, yeah. yes. And they also pay a permit fee uh, in order to have the lights on the field. I think in this case, because it's our system that's down, uh, you know, I don't know that we need a permit fee. Yeah. And if they're willing to get the lights provided by somebody, you know, that's fine. You don't have an issue with that. Okay. They can just work with facilities on where to um, designate the lights, right? Correct, okay. yes. Yeah, all we have to do is specify where they would go. Uh, this is, a, I mean, I think the lights issue, you know, comes up every year, um, but as Jim says, the timing for this particular piece to go bad at, at Adam was just, you know, very bad. Yeah. Um, as far as tennis courts go, I really don't want to go there. Uh, you know, they're pretty much, you know, uh, designated for that purpose for tennis. Uh, we've expanded it to pickleball and anybody else in there? 
yeah, at, on the courts. Yeah. So I'd rather get the lights provided or get right. the lights so that they can have the lights on the field and use it out there right. as they need to. I'd be concerned about safety on tennis courts. If yeah, that's not tennis courts, you know, are, they're not, yeah. you know, they're, if there's nothing else, and the kids certainly make use of them, right. you know, <laughs> for whatever they want to play right. or whatever they want to ride. But I, I'd rather just go ahead and do the lights at, at, right. uh, yeah. at them for that. That's about three weeks, I guess, it's going to be before something actually happens there. So Jim will work on that. Thank you. Okay, we'll go on ahead to new business. Um, the joint use agreement with Santa Maria Joint Union High School District is in our packets and it's on for action item. So Jim's going to go over this contract. Uh, it's actually should have been here a long time ago. Uh, somewhere along the realm I lost it and uh, it was uh, Jim had worked with the district several months back to get it brought forward, updated. And so uh, we're a little arrears in this so I apologize for that. Yeah, before you is a resolution and a copy of the agreement to approve a, a joint use agreement with the Santa Maria Joint Union High School District. Uh, we've had an agreement for over 40 years. It hasn't been updated in that time. Uh, the, we've worked with the uh, district back and forth. We've updated specific uh, elements, for instance, the uh, uh, pool use agreement and those type of things. Uh, basically, what uh, between used to be we needed a lot of gym space before we went into the agreements with the elementary district. So we were using Wilson's gym and the girls' gym at the high school. And over the years, as the district has improved their facilities, they've reduced their need. So basically, we've got it down to uh, the agreement would be the district using the tennis courts at Manami Center uh, for their tennis programs, boys and girls, uh, Elks Field for their baseball program, and then a couple of um, community and or uh, 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 sports dinners like football banquet and those type of things at the Veterans Memorial Building. Uh, what we would um, get w would be the access to the gyms when we need them. For, for instance, we host a couple of uh, large tournaments. We're not the gyms that we have just are not sufficient, so we do need the uh, Wilson Gym, and then uh, also the tracks at uh, Santa Maria High and at Pioneer High School. Uh, would be ours, and then in the agreement, it spells out the responsibilities of each of the parties. And then also if uh, an agency can keep uh, work out a, a place to store some equipment so the coaches or uh, programmers aren't having to bring them back and forth all the time uh, with that. Uh, then the, um, as far as scheduling, which is uh, item four on page two, uh, the priority obviously would either be district programs if it's a district site or uh, city programs if it's a city site. And then uh, the agency would fall in. If we were requesting a district site after their program, we would have second priority and vice versa uh, when it comes to use, use of ours. Uh, the district also in here, you know, item C, you know, they're primarily looking at uh, our use of their facilities for youth programs, uh, youth being high school and under, uh, although we can use them for uh, adult programs with the primary focuses for youth programming. Uh, as far as cost, uh, unless uh, additional costs are above and beyond normal operating expenses uh, are incurred. It's an exchange of service uh, of facilities at no cost to either party. Uh, if there is damage created by either party, then that party will be responsible for maintaining or uh, reimbursing the other party or getting the repairs made at the site and bringing it back to a uh, hold. Uh, with that, uh, you know, there should be minimal impacts uh, to each, uh, the district and our operations is we can do it within the existing budgets and we have been doing this exchange of service over the years and then say this is just enough. And it's a 10 year agreement at this point. Uh, we have 10 years from date of execution. So with that all. Questions? <clears throat> Pioneer, uh, that's still open for swims during the summer. Yes, Pioneer, that's a separate uh, agreement with the pool. We have uh, during the summer, it's uh, ours for scheduling from 10 a.m. to either 6 or 8 p.m. For and open swim. For open swim, we do swim lessons out there. Uh, we've done a couple of special events, so it's ours, uh, just like Santa Maria High School Pool is, uh, per the agreements when they're not, when the district, whether it's a holiday or vacation or summer off, uh, we have the uses during that time for scheduling. And that's separate from this agreement. How about the lifeguards? The is lifeguard that involved in this? Like we for supply lifeguards for somebody, don't we? Yeah, that would be the uh, pool use agreement that we already have in place. 
and the district reimburses us for our cost of operating. We do the maintenance and provide lifeguards, and they reimburse us. We bill them every six months, and they reimburse us that expense. That's sure a good deal for the school district, yeah. particularly the liability of the lifeguards. So this agreement is for the track and field and the gymnasiums with the high school districts? Correct. Which is just San Maria and Pioneer, not Rigetti? Correct. Okay. Commissioner Spray. This is just, maybe I'm nitpicking, but in, in, under district responsibilities, the second line, uh, I think that word should be reasonably as opposed to reasonable. I don't know if that makes any difference uh, legal-wise, but just before this gets all signed by everybody, if in case it makes some sort of a legal difference, at least I think that's what that word should have been. Thanks for catching that. <laughs> it's, it's, a, Page nine. it's a curse. Uh, a question I did have, has, has the... Legal counsel for both the district and city reviewed this already, and yes, and both councils okay have reserved, yeah, reviewed okay. it. Okay. Is there any deviations from the previous agreement we had? That's basically the same agreement, okay. although the previously though you know it was uh, a lot broader, and this is narrowed down to basically the facilities that we need, and it uh, should hopefully you know um, reduce make the hours of use a little more comparable for each side where before it was heavily on the high school district's uh, use of, uh, versus our use. And then, do you have a question? Go ahead. Um, does the agreement address public use of fields or tracks, say on the weekends or in the evenings, if um, a community member wanted to access the track? No, it does not. It just provides it for, uh, if we ask to use it for an event or an activity, not public access like we have at Allen Hancock College. Is that something that's going to be considered in the future or a separate agreement? Well, the district has their own policies for public use, so we try not to infringe on their public uses. Okay. So, do we no. know what those are? Um, pretty much it's similar to what we do. There's a public permitting process. You have to go in, you have to pay a fee, and reimburse them for their uh, custodial costs uh, if it's the track. Um, it, I mean, I, I think it's several hundred dollars to use the track, like for a soccer game, for example. I know it's several hundred dollars to use it, but that would be similar to how, you know, we charge for the vets. You know, they would do it through a public contract. And the reason we have the agreement with Allen Hancock College is we made a contribution towards our track where we had mm -hmm. not done that uh, with the high school fields. Just personally had great feedback on that agreement. I've, I've spoken to many community members that are very pleased with that arrangement and use the facility and um, appreciate our agreement there. So. Cool. Could it be something where we as a city would rent the field and track and be able to rent it to? <laughs> You know, we actually ran across a situation where, uh, where the high school, where Paul Nelson Pool was down. Right. And we tried to use our arrangement with the district to allow the swim club that we had dislocated from Paul Nelson because the pool was down and the district wouldn't accept that because it's pretty much an arrangement with the city and no. for the city, for okay. the city's events. Uh, so our, our direct sponsored group like Special Olympics or something like that Yes, they would fall within the agreement, but the other organizations that are kind of co-sponsored or, you know, I don't know, whatever else you want to call them, no. They would have to go through the public process. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner I, Spry and then Commissioner Grun. I can remember in years past there have been some problems that associated with using some of the facilities that the city thought they had the right to go in. I think it was Special Olympics stuff and then found everything locked up. Does this agreement, will that preclude that from ever happening again? Or were, were those? Uh... Um, well, hopefully, it, yes, it will help so that those things don't happen. But, you know, um, we ourselves are guilty of that. This morning, the polling place at Miami Center wasn't open until 10 minutes after 7, and it was supposed to be open at 6 a.m. But, but that so was those mis things happen, yes. And that was a mistake, because I recall yeah. these were, no, you can't use this. Yeah. Um, well, again, if it's scheduled for something that's for school use, um, and I'm thinking of the situation you're talking about, is the basketball coach or somebody wanted to use their facility yes. and, and hence blocked us out, even though we already had a permit. Uh, I don't know that it really talks specifically about who's got first say. Well, it does say that the district would have first say, but it's one of those that uh, they would have to block it out. If we requested it, basically what I'm saying is, 
the coach after we had a reserve cannot come back in and say, okay, oh, I guess I'm going to have practice this afternoon. Because if, if they came at the last second, which is what probably happened the time before, say, oh, no, wait a minute, I need this for practice, sorry. Right. And I think in that situation, the coach just did it and did not communicate with anybody in the uh, district or at the plant with the plant manager. Uh, so uh, that was, I remember we call that situation, and uh, the coach got talked to later because he didn't have that right okay. to uh, turn away the program since we had a reserve. So here it says on page ten that you would be we would be scheduling with the district annually, so yes. that you could schedule it schedule out you know your special uses so that it would yeah. kind of negate that or we you would hope <laughs> that people would go through the right channels right and we would already have everything scheduled so yeah it's similar to the agreements we have with uh, hancock college and uh, a couple other groups that we and even working with the uh, youth groups now we're scheduling a year in advance so that mm -hmm. we for programming and allowing each other to work around each other's needs and with the gymnasiums it's worked well at the ele elementary school or the junior highs okay any other questions, Mr. Grennan? You have well, a just a comment on the somebody coming in or the coach saying, I'm sorry, I'm going to practice longer or something. I thought the school district was pretty cooperative because when this first got started, coaches thought they owned the gyms on the junior high campuses and wrote letters to the editor or had other people write them complaining about they couldn't even use a gymnasium on their campus. But their principals were given that problem and they had conversations and they squelled all that so that I think that's a pretty uh, good relationship that they can solve that problem. I was going to ask about the vets and I don't know if in this need for space that we're talking about if it's not if it's more than soccer but is there any volleyball or basketball going on at the vets? No we don't use that floor for anything but Public events, so or there's dancing. No, no sports going on in there. Right. Any other questions or comments? Just a process question. So, has the district uh, accepted this yet or approved it? It hasn't gone to the board yet, but it, it staff level has been accepted. They're waiting for us to get the council's approval, and then they'll take it to the board. Okay. So, if for whatever reason. They were to change that the district board would that come back to us then with the, with any yes. changes yes okay. okay so we're going to go ahead to move to vote on resolution number 201604 to pass to council a resolution of the recreation and parks commission recommending a joint use agreement between the city of santa maria and the santa maria joint union high school district for use of facilities um can i get a motion so moved and can i get second. a second all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Resolution moves forward to City Council. Could I ask then, um, how close are we to reaching a similar agreement with Santa Maria Benita School District? We've submitted to them the final version for the Jimenez school agreement. At Santa Maria Bonita, every school is done on an individual basis. So Jimenez school is right now uh, being considered. And then uh, we'll hear back from them. And it's very similar. We try to use the same basic format. Um, and hopefully we'll get something signed before the end of the year. And then uh, bring it, we'll probably be back to you maybe at your December meeting. I'll, uh, I'll send an email so we can see where, where they are with it. I think it was going to their uh, council uh, to be looked at. Is that the only use agreement we have in the pipeline with Bonita School District? Yes. As far as, uh, as, far as uh, joint use measures go, we have the gymnasium agreements that are out there. Um, there is probably a 1960s vintage joint use agreement that's kind of floating around out there that we use, but or we used to use, but now we're just trying to update everything. So we'll probably go one for every, every site. It just makes it more manageable for us uh, because each site is so different. So this Jimenez will kind of be our offshoot, correct? Yeah, we'll use that one as kind of the, the, the model. Everybody's attorney will be familiar with it and if 
another school site has different requirements, we can just insert those into the uh, agreement and then uh, not have to go through the, uh, the uh, legal review again. Can I ask another question? Sure. No. <laughs> Please. <laughs> so as far as public access to courts and fields currently, are we still working on that? Or are they? Yes. Yes. Well, it was something that came up at the field committee meeting. Okay. That was a couple weeks back. Right. Um, it's, it's my understanding that, uh, yes, it's still an option, and the district still has their public process for groups to apply. Okay. Um, so that's kind of where it is. We can talk a little bit more about it on that item. Okay, thank you. Okay, moving on to old business, um, item A, multi-use sport field committee report. There it is, see, just like that. <laughs> so it's another Jim thing, okay. so we'll let Jim talk about it. He's uh, been very busy. We had our, the initial meeting, of the expanded committee meeting of the uh, multi-field use with members of the public involved. Uh, that occurred uh, a couple weeks ago. Our next meeting is tomorrow at 4 o'clock at the Abel Maldonado Youth Center. Uh, initial meeting, we covered uh, the purpose of the committee, project timelines, overview of current fields, uh, including sites that the city had reviewed for larger complexes of properties that we had, and additional locations in the inventory for practice space. And uh, we've also got a representative from the Santa Maria Joint, or Santa Maria Bonita School District, Scott Roy, is also on the committee. Uh, and I don't know if any of the commissioners over there have any comments. Or? My only thing was, oh, not my only thing, but one of my first things on the notes, the committee report, um, under discussion, it says our next meeting is November 8th. If the minutes just want to reflect that, it should be November 9th. Um, Mr. Grandin, did you want to share first? No, I mean, other than... There was a lot of good input there. I thought we had two city council people. The mayor was there and one of the, Terry Zunig was there. So the, the board has basically come down from the council. We need the fields, get the fields, which is about the biggest ax, I guess you could swing at the tree. So um, the other thing is if you listen to the, I'll say they're mostly men. I'm sure there's a woman involved someplace there. Discussing using the fields they do work very cooperatively together, trying to make it work. And I kind of felt like you could almost put those guys in a room and they would they would square it away and have the spaces all set up and every, you know. So, uh, but anyway, they seem to be very very anxious to be cooperative and get that thing working. It's Sorry, on. Is your mic on, Commissioner Griffin? Oh, I thought it's a red light. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> red lights on. Yes. Thank you. I'm using just my obscene phone telephone. Because we have voice. this little recorder here, and it's best to hear you. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, my only, I guess, observation from that, I think we need some, some guidelines to kind of move forward. I kind of felt like every, there was good ideas, but they were kind of all a little bit spread out. And so I kind of... I think, I don't know how the rest of the commissioners feel, but at least um, when setting this committee up, I really kind of imagined it as a working group moving forward to identify some short-term um, short term goals and really identifying field space. Um, and I, I really would like to see that, that that gets done in this next meeting and the next meetings moving forward um, so that when they are this committee does present a report whether it's in our December meeting or if it has to be pushed back to January we kind of have something strategic that we're using um, I know that there was a some um, and I don't remember who said they had you know charts and numbers but Nothing was really brought to the table, and I think um, that would be useful moving forward. And I know in our leisure assessment as well, we have a lot of information in terms of what joint use agreements we have, um, kind of what prop, you know, what are field space uses that we need, um, and what field space we can kind of use moving forward. So I'd really like to see us use that information, um, especially what's already out there and what we can improve with the committee and then seeing, looking at those kind of multi-use agreements that we could, like you've been saying, what multi-use agreements can we create 
there's one in the pipeline for Jimenez, but what other sites can we really use? And I think this committee, that's the work that I would like to see them do um, to create new space that's, that we can attain now. You know, I know that we all kind of have that illusion of this grand complex, but I don't think it's something that's going to happen realistically now, and, and now is when we need this field space. Um, and I really want to see that this group create something more for the now instead of what we can do 20 years from now. So that was just kind of my take. And that is the uh, plan for tomorrow is we have a list of all the fields, both our fields, city fields and district fields, uh, whether or not their uh, committee's input is to whether usable for practice only or possibly game. Mm -hmm. And then if uh, they're going to be used, what type of improvements may need to be done uh, and work through that. And then also, uh, uh, Rick Flasco uh, with uh, Cal South Soccer provided a matrix. Uh, I've got copies of that, that uh, some of the things that they've looked at uh, in the Valley. Uh, so that is the, uh, I, a couple of the items on the agenda for tomorrow. We Good. Uh, have Commissioner Sprague. I, I, just a couple of comments. One, I was at the initial meeting and that was that is exactly what we discussed was going over what the various options are and it's kind of like we did for Buena Vista Park and rating them in terms of their feasibility or not feasible or you know kind of on a, as, at a rating scale so I think that, that was actually discussed at, at that initial meeting and also I was, but what at the initial meeting uh, I was I was impressed I guess with the enthusiasm from the community that this really seems to be something that the community is saying yes we want to do this and there seems to be a seems to be at this point a concerted effort on everyone's part to have some role or to see that it, it happens uh, so I, I think I've got some I'm very optimistic going forward that being said now, uh, I, one thing I needed to bring up is initially I was, I was selected to be on this committee and I was more than happy to do it. Because of my inability to attend some of these meetings, I need to withdraw myself from the committee and, and Ileana graciously stood in for me at the last meeting and whoever needs to be, great, but I, I'm going to have to withdraw just by, by virtue of my inability to be at these meetings. Um, should we address that now? Sure. Okay. So, because I am the chair, I, I become the replacement for any absent commissioners, but if anybody else would like to appoint themselves to this committee, I will gladly give up my spot. You did an excellent job of running that meeting. I'm warning everybody else. No, I'm unable to okay. attend tomorrow. Just want to, I just want to put it out there before I just join myself. So. This is tomorrow what time? Well, it's an ongoing committee. Yeah. So. Yes. I just wanted to put the, the option out there for the rest of you before I just appoint myself in Kirk's spot. Tomorrow at 1, did you say? 4. 4. So the question is, this is the committee that's, that's talking about the field access for the soccer fields mm -hmm. and the ultimately building the complex that we want to build? Yes. Yeah. Um, and it's okay if you can't. I just wanted to yeah. make sure I, did, you, I didn't impose. Step on any toes. Okay, yes. yes. I, you're not going to step okay. on my toes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Commissioner Spry, I will replace you. Not replace you. I will take your spot on the commission. <laughs> on the Re committee. Replace is fine. No, that, that's good. <laughs> Commissioner um, Velasco, so just a couple of comments, you know, from what I read in the minutes and what I've heard from staff that were at the meeting. I think one of the important things is, is that we do keep it, things in perspective. So the, the first perspective is to handle the immediate need of fields. And so, you know, that's kind of the way I've you know, instructed the staff to work towards, let's get this identified, let's get these places looked at. Uh, what I think from, the, from, the, uh, from that perspective, you know, we, we know what we have and we know what the district has. And all we need to do now is find out what the issues are with those particular facilities. And then how, how do we approach solving the issues with those facilities? Uh, is it approaching the, uh, the district and saying, you know, can you change your fencing? Can you do something a little different? Can you open your gates at this time? Uh, based on what the, the soccer community is telling us that they need. And then the other component of that is, okay, uh, okay, well, I'll open my gates, but the field is in bad shape. How do we partner the city, the district, and the leagues to get that? facility in better shape so that it is playable. Um, what is the process going to be to get a group to use a facility? You know, uh, uh, 
what's the cost going to be? What, what you know? What's the arrangements going to be uh, done? So there's a lot of work to be done to just getting the the, the current field levels. Then, you know, sorry I'm sounding like a broken record, then you have the issue of, of the sports field complex and what that's going to look like and how that's going to evolve. So you're almost, again, you know, on two tracks. And I think that it's important for information like um, uh, Mr. Velasco has about the Cal South soccer and the assessment of leagues and the assessment of fields and how many players are out there and, and Ms. Cadeno, you know, what's, what's available? What do the teams need and how are we going to move forward towards this you know, future complex. So two tracks is what I'm trying to make a point about. And that uh, we have to set some achievable goals for the next six months so that we can actually end up with a program that addresses the immediate need. And then we can either simultaneously or at the end of the, the once we've addressed the issue of field availability now, then start to tackle some of the other issues. Yeah. Well, yeah, I agree with the two-prong thing because I see it as an immediate need and a long-term need, and that's the big sports complex. But I agree with Ileana, the more information we can get now and get discussed, it's going to be the baseline for how well we're going to get everybody involved in putting a nickel into this thing because it's not going, going to come free. Yes. My other question is um, with H Hancock that the multi-use agreement we have with them is just for their track, or is it for their open space? It includes the open space, but for department programs only. Yeah, we that didn't address, we didn't address. The, the track is for public use, but uh, the use of the, the uh, grass area would be for department programs. So that would also be, like a, like at the high school district, it's a public use facility, uh, request that would need to go? Correct, yes, for those groups. now. That's not to say that we couldn't work with the college, you know, on another, you know, agreement to talk right. about the use of those spaces. But you know, they're they're pretty impacted in the little area that they have. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's what, like three soccer fields, maybe two football fields, or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, and they and I know they use it during football season for their training sites. And right. Then, uh, right now, is it men's soccer right now? Girls soccer is going on there, and they use that. They one play their games there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And we don't have a representative from Hancock on our committee on the committee. No. So maybe Not at this something. Time. Yes. Maybe cool. something to talk about. Yeah. I don't know who it'd be. Okay. Probably the athletic director, I would think. Okay. Maybe their facilities person. So. Or yeah, if we, they could make an appearance. Sure, to we can kind of um, let us know their process as well. Sure, we can ask. Okay. Any other comments, questions? No. Okay. Moving forward, um, update on soccer grant application. So I'm going to let Teresa talk to you a little bit about where we are in that process. Good evening, commissioners. The state of California Parks had a grant, grant available for $16 million, of which you could apply for up to a million dollars. On Friday, November 1st, we submitted a grant application to try to achieve that. Now, let me be cautiously optimistic. It's a very competitive process, and it's going to go to the communities that have the most poverty, um, issues in the schools, crime, it's based on population, demographics, and there are a lot of communities in the state of California that are experiencing the same thing that we have. We worked with the school district to get the stats. Um, as you know, many of you, that all of the schools are giving free and reduced lunches. That has changed just a little bit in the last year because of the increase in the minimum wage. However, I think that we have a very competitive um, application that we sent on. Cindy Hoskins attended a grant workshop up in Sacramento, and then Mr. Posada met with Bill Myers from the state of California, and he became very familiar with me and my questions, so hopefully that's a good thing. 
Um, if awarded, this would be the initial phase of the soccer complex we're talking about. And everybody says, well, what are we going to be able to do with a million dollars? But you have to start somewhere. And a million dollars is a pretty good start. Um, what of the, the this would help us create a phase one. And Baxter Miller, who typically works with us, gave us an estimate of phase one being $1,308,328. So we're looking at about $1,300 there. I'm sorry, 1.3 million. Does that include purchase of land? Pardon me? Does that include purchase of land? Well, I'm glad you brought that up because one of our biggest challenges right now is there is, has been two different sites available. One was at Stoll Road by the um, Moffey Trench area. That was not the best place for us because of transportation and being a little bit out more in the wilderness. That is where the Humane Society built their facility. But adjacent to the Santa Barbara County Fairgrounds, there is a space that would allow for uh, phase one to occur. 100 parking spots. Let me see, let me give you an overview of what we could do with that. So phase one, the focus of this grant, would provide eight acres on which we could build two soccer fields, 100 parking spaces, restrooms, on-site stormwater retention, a maintenance area, and the majority of all the infrastructure needed to complete future phases. So that would be a great inspirational step for us. Um, I have talked to a potential donor too. So something like that, if there's donors out there that are willing to contribute, um, would this would give them more meat to invest in. So we will not find out what our status is for several months, several months. The last grant we wrote, I think we got information just like eight months later. So, but I think we've done a good job. Um, I think that this, it would be a great impact for the community. Um, I have heard because of my affiliation with Rotary that the Santa Barbara County Fairgrounds is looking at dislocating to somewhere in the San Inez Valley. So there might be an opportunity there if that ends up happening because it's right across the street. The other thing that is attractive about this location is it's right across the street from Adam Basin and that would help with tournaments and other activities. So two questions. With the CDBG process, we one of the requirements that we have been given by HUD is to have a number of estimates and the projects be shovel ready. How is, is are there those requirements for this grant from the state as well? Are they similar requirements? Oh, they're. Go ahead. Just gonna say the state gives you five years to do your project after they award you. So much more generous than HUD. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that was the key question. And so if we do use this particular land across from the Santa Maria Fairplex, um, what you're saying is phase one gets us two fields, a couple buildings, 100 spaces, but then there's other land around that that we would later do. Dennis is going to put the chart up. So well, we let me qualify it for you. For them to locate, relocate the fair park would That's be a, a tremendous emphasis and a lot of politics. But that is in the back of their mind what we have learned because they're, we're not allowed to rent those buildings out anymore. So that is kind of the big picture when we look looking at that space all the way around. Our biggest challenge right now is by December 31st we have to have some kind of a signed agreement about the land with the landowners. So that is our biggest challenge at this time. Pretty much everything else is in place. You want to add anything to that, Alex? Now, let me just talk about Henry's question, which was about land. So uh, can you hand me the pointer from over there somewhere? I think it's over there. So let, let's go back in history, uh, back to the 1990s when uh, the city did a couple of things on the on the this corridor of Blosser Road. They created two specific plans. Uh, one of them was the Blosser South 
west specific plan and one was the Blosser southeast specific plan. And what that did was to uh, the city uh, pre-zoned this agricultural land for public uses, uh, commercial development, whatever it was, residential. So what has happened here is this is uh, about ballpark figures. About 19 acres is what you see up on the screen um, of a 156 acre site owned by the Aquist Apache family. They were the family that also owned the property south of, uh, south of Battles Road, which is where Pacific Crest, Jimenez School, um, um, the other development that's in there, Harvest Glen, uh, that was part of their project. So now they are getting ready to move forward with development of the remaining 156 acres. So many years ago, when that specific plan was done, this parcel of land was already set aside for public park, public facilities. So the zoning already exists. So what that means is that the developer, unless he wants to go through a complete new EIR, tens, maybe even hundreds of thousands of dollars to do that, this land is designated to be used for these public purposes. The two differences is that the park land and the school land are managed differently. The district, uh, elementary school district is responsible for acquiring the parcel of land for their school site and the city is responsible for the public, the remaining public facilities in the park site. Uh, we do that through what we call negotiations with the developer, through developer fees, through our growth mitigation program, our Quimby fees, and a number of other things. So it's a, it's a little bit different picture. So what we're asking um, for right now is that the current property owner would, ahead of, ahead of doing anything else on the parcel, would lease us or give us the eight acres that they will eventually have to give us anyway at some point in time in the future when they start to develop now so that we can use that money now from the state grant so we can move forward with developing the first two fields which are in the upper uh, left hand corner of the screen there. So um, that's kind of where we are land use wise. Uh, the, the good thing is there was already an environmental impact report that was done although it was many years ago it's still the acceptable form so we were able to do that quickly. Uh, the Stoll Road project site that we were looking at further uh, west was not, had no environmental work done for our purposes, which would again be tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars to do. So this presented itself as the more doable of the projects timing wise to get something going quickly. If we get the grant, uh, you could, and if we get the agreement from the property owners for the lease for the property, you could conceivably see construction starting next year on the on the two fields. Um, you know, by the time we go to bed and we do all the things that the cities have to do, you're probably talking, you know, the end of 17, maybe the beginning of 2018, somewhere around there. Uh, the other phases would come as development happens. Um, it's, it's kind of open-ended at this point in time, but initially to get our foot in the door on the parcel line with the grant, we need those eight acres to, to kind of move forward. And that's kind of the land use uh, issue, Henry, if that answered your question. Is that uh, the trailer park up there, is that uh, Morrison that goes down the top? Uh, that is uh, the railroad at the very top. And then Adam Basin would be directly across the street from uh, that kind of yellow, yellow line there. Sorry, my pointer does not show up on the screen, so. Yeah, Manami Center would be. Yeah. Uh, Sanchez School is directly across the street on the left. That says a future high school site. Future uh, junior, junior high. high. Junior high. Oh, yes. One of the things that was attractive also is you had to demonstrate that you could use the space 365 days of years and at different times so that was going to make our our um, application more competitive so because we're aligned with the school we were able to put together a very aggressive schedule for the use of that 
facility if we were able to get the money. Ideally, the elementary school district would want 20 acres for their junior high school site. This site that they have under this specific plan is only 13 acres, and there's an adjoining five acres to the left, which you see the two soccer fields, which is our phase, uh, our phase three, I believe. Uh, those, well, any of the acreage, but that one in particular could be um, jointly used so that the district can have access to that during the day and use it for their additional play field space. And we are in, in very, very, very initial discussions about that with some of the staff at the, at the district office. And the rest of that, the hundred, or the rest of the acreage is zoned residential, commercial? Uh, there's commercial, residential, some uh, high density residential, and some single family units. Uh, commercial along Blosser, I believe, mm -hmm. a couple of Blosser parcels are commercial. Uh, service for those residences, you know, uh, retail and those kinds of things would be there. And just to clarify, even if the Fair Park made the decision to move and it should become available, we're, we're talking many years in the future, are we not? We're talking very long range, and yeah. that's just something that we learned in dealing with them recently. To find the land that they need in that area would be extremely expensive. Yeah. So, okay, that's that's what I just wanted to clarify because I think that's something maybe yes. <laughs> way in the future, way but for right now, future. we got to focus on this. Yes. yes. Correct. Okay. Do we need any direction further for this? You know, we just wanted to give you kind of an update. So, we're in the hopper at the state. We're waiting for the landowner to uh, sign some documents. We're hoping that will happen in the next couple of weeks. We have until the 31st of December to get those documents to the state as part of our application. And, um, you know, we're working on it. And their their timeline is when, when will they, the state make a decision on the grant? I don't think we'll know anything until probably, yeah, I would say June, July, maybe. Yeah, okay. the first of July. Year. Yes. What about um, the, the landowners that we need this... Uh, agreement from what is have we gotten any feedback well um, yes we've talked to the their representative and we talked to the family around a table at, at a meeting at the planning department um, uh, they know that this land use designation is there and they know that some way or another they're going to have to do it the question is do they do it now and and what's the remuneration for them if they did it now and we have presented a proposal to them that they would be, uh, right now they rent that area out, they lease it out for agricultural business. Uh, our proposal um, uh, makes them whole on that agricultural agreement that they have so that uh, if they're willing to, the state requires a 30 year lease for a million dollar grant. So what we're asking them is that they uh, consider a 30 year lease for the uh, the cost of what they're getting or the income that they're getting now from agricultural uses plus an escalator uh, over each of the years so that they're again their family is left whole with as far as their revenue goes from the project if if we didn't develop this and they left it into ag use which is the only use it can be used for right now we're trying to keep that scale the same so that there's no uh, impact to them it is a large family there are many uh, members of the family and some of them don't live in the country so there's, you know, a number of communications and each of them has their own uh, legal representation. So it all has to work through each of those. Well, I think it's moving very quickly. For, for a project, uh, yes. For a project, um, I, I think it's moving of very this magnitude. Contrary to, you know, <laughs> what others may think, but we all know that that's very quick turnaround for something like that. Yes. So. Okay. The uh, business with the Fair Park looking to move that just sounds to me like a very creative diversion conversation. You know, the, the Fair Park has talked about moving since I moved to Santa Maria. There's been a group of fair directors that have had an interest. Every year somebody steps up and says, well, I have somebody who will donate some land or whatever it is. Uh, certainly that's a prime piece of land. Uh, the state's property disposal system is very complex and takes a lot of time. Uh, they have to uh, make it available to public agencies first. They have, they have an armory on the property that has to be dealt with. 
there's a number of, which it involves the federal government and the State Department of, um, of Military Affairs. So it's a very complex situation. They just can't say, okay, we're selling and we're moving. So long time, very long time. Thank you for the update and thank you for that. Uh, moving on to seven, budget update. Ten our packets. Are we at seven already? Any no, questions? Time flies when you're having fun. So typically, we are within two to five percent under budget, and this is no change. So, um, as of the end of October 31st, we are at three percent under budget, which is a really good place to be. Now, as we get more into our higher level programming times and renovations and all the good work that our parks crew does. Um, that becomes a little more strained, but of all the city departments that I look at the budgets, I will, can honestly say that recreation and parks is one that always has cost savings. And are we fully staffed for safe and strong for the fall program? Yes, we are. There are three sites. Okay. Any questions on the budget? Okay, moving on. 7B noteworthy activities. We have that report in our packets as well. Any questions or comments on that? My only question or comment was um, city rangers have the task of enforcing the new smoke free in the parks. Will we be getting some type of feedback on what they've seen in their education portion before they start their citations? Yes, actually, Casey will be coming to your December meeting, I believe, kind of giving you a little bit of update on the program, and we'll also talk about smoking. Uh, right now, we are in the education component. Uh, nice big yellow signs are up at the sites. Uh, it has been actually pretty good. Uh, they felt that it's people have been respectful not only of what the signs say, but of the signs themselves. Uh, we haven't lost any that I'm aware of. Uh, the um, plan is is that uh, sometime in the Jan in the December January time frame, the Parks Division will start to move ashtrays away from those areas and move them out to the perimeters of like City Hall area. Uh, right now, they're kind of still at the doors. We st we still want people to be able to extinguish, you know, without having to put their butt on the ground and you know extinguish it that way so we're trying to figure out a way to, to do that um, I think I ordered some new ash tray containers I meant to which we could put on the perimeters and they would also have a, a no smoking kind of be on this point kind of thing uh, they'll begin issuing citations $100 uh, in the in the February March time frame and I think I mentioned before, if they run against, they run into a violator right now who's done it more than once or twice that they have had contact with, they'll go ahead and issue a citation now. They are administrative citations, so they're not a criminal citation, and um, they work directly with the city attorney's office to clear up those kinds of citations. So when you talk about ashtrays, you're talking about those ones you drop it in, it's a little tube that comes Yes, in. yeah, that's what we're looking for, at least around the city hall complex area. It might even be a consideration to put a, something in the ground that an umbrella can poke into. I mean, for goodwill. <laughs> can, can you uh, smoke with one foot in the street? I'm sorry? Smoke with one foot in the street? You, you could smoke on the public sidewalk, yes. So they could put a foot in the street and stand there and have a cigarette and they're not breaking any Correct, others. as long as they're not within 20 feet of any oh, 20 door feet. or window in a building they can they can smoke yes the, the only feedback i've gotten has been positive just it's like they're glad to see that the city has taken that stand and now the parks are smoke free that's that's the feedback and i've gotten our next educational endeavor will be in the next not this recreation guide but the next recreation guide when we start to do a little bit more education in there and talk about our sports leagues programs and smoking in the dugouts and all those kinds of things, which you know have traditionally been a place where people would maybe leave the dugout and go smoke in the parking lot. Well, now you're not not able to smoke anywhere. Yeah. So just again educating our sports people about that. Okay. Our basketball people have been pretty good because the district doesn't allow smoking anywhere on their property, so they've been pretty decent about it. Yeah. 
I had another question with the shopping carts that the rangers are having to pick up. Um, I see that they're starting to collect information on that. Will that include, is that a cost to us to recuperate? I mean, besides time and will we be doing some type of cost analysis to charge stores? <laughs> that um, there's a real convoluted state law that deals with shopping carts and basically it, 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 it provides um, immunity for the owners of the carts. They're considered the victim, so they don't, we, we can't find them for having their carts off their property. Uh, they, some of them anyway, contract with a, with a shopping cart retrieval company who then takes carts and they pay them, you know, a couple of bucks a cart to do that. Uh, so far, um, we don't have that arrangement with them. Uh, so right now we're just collecting them. Uh, we let the businesses know that we have them if they want to come and pick them up. Sometimes a shopping cart retrieval company will come and pick them up from our site. And uh, the rangers have done it more on a, uh, on a um, violation of state law, which is using the carts for purposes other than what they were intended. Right. So for that purpose, I think that's why you see the rangers collecting a lot of carts. <coughs> or we still have our own shopping cart group that collects the carts and just takes them back to the stores. If we find that just to be more uh, time, uh, the time management for that was, uh, the time expense was a lot less than actually having to go through the whole process of getting the businesses to come and pick them up and having to sign them out and logging them in and out and those kinds of things, so. Okay, thank you. If, yes. if one of our city rangers finds a person with a warrant, what do they what do they do at that point? They have eight warrants, eight persons with warrants in October. If if the warrant is over ten thousand dollars and they arrest them and uh, we take uh, take them into custody at that point in time and then wait for the police to come and we transfer custody over to the police. Uh, if it's under ten thousand dollars, they issue a new citation that the person has to appear in court to deal with that prior warrant. Uh, and pretty much the way any peace officer would handle it. But our rangers are not armed? Is no. that correct? Do they have stun guns? Yes. <laughs> they do have a taser and the batons. batons. And spray and then the OC spray, yes. Yeah. Wow. And for the most part, I think, you know, they do run across... <laughs> They do run across a few people who are a little belligerent and those kinds of things. And when that kind of a situation comes up, um, usually when we make a contact in the field, the, the rangers, they usually are two. They usually wait for someone to come and back them up. If it's somebody that's had a major problem, then we just ask for the PD to respond to them. And they usually uh, show up pretty quick for us. Well, I'm sure that's yeah. true. All right. Um, moving on to official business conducted by a member and report of any community interest items. I just wanted to give a shout out to our GEM recipients um, that were from the Department of Special Events in the Rec and Parks. I thought that was great and um, that they got recognized. So That was very nice. Yes. So, I know yeah, they, I, they I, there's a lot of work behind the scenes that nobody sees yeah. until they... Yeah, I recognize the name Velasco. <laughs> no relation. <laughs> yeah. so. so just a reminder for next meeting is that we will be uh, having a... a a regular meeting at four o'clock, and then we'll adjourn to um, a dinner meeting. And uh, I'm not sure exactly where we're going. Does it With say on your agenda? No. Uh, I Just believe it's going to be at one of the community centers. We'll actually move the meeting to the community center, have a meeting, and then adjourn to that. And it'll be a the play board will be invited to that, and it'll be a, a joint meeting just to kind of discuss the year and see how things have gone. Commissioner Spry, uh, can I get Ms. money instead? Ms. <laughs> Mrs. Mrs. Spry is welcome to come if you're out of town. Okay, so. I, I will tell her that. <laughs> <Senator Actually>. representative. <laughs> That's true, I will tell her that. <laughs> All right, anything else? We'll go ahead and adjourn um, until December 13th at 4 p.m. here. Who's doing the Christmas tree thing? Oh, yay. yeah. Oh, yeah, wait, hold on. Yes. Who's Jenny? Who's oh, Light Sites Holiday That's Nights? That's the community partnership. So it's a little bit different. Teresa, you want no? to go over that? How Light Sites is going to work this year? I'm not judging. I'm not aware of that change, so <laughs> no. <laughs> so basically what they're going to do is uh, uh, make, a, make a map up of whatever information they get from people who say, you know, I would like to put my house on the map. Mm -hmm. And then that map is going to be uh, 
printed and presented. Uh, the, uh, they are going to get a certificate of participation, as I understand, everybody will. And those groups who have traditionally been our, our more um, our constant winners, our regular winners, uh, there's going to be some level of involvement for them. And I, I'm not exactly sure what that was going to be. Either they were going to help pick out uh, awardees or special recognition uh, levels. It's a little bit different than we've done before. Uh, but we figured this way we would keep our people who do a lot of decorating in the mix. Yeah. They should, they should um, judge. <laughs> I think that's part of the component that, yeah. that Cindy wants to do with them. Okay. So. To do what? Right. Judge. Okay. And then the tree lighting. On tree the lighting side. at City Hall. Yes, that'll be the... Uh, what, Friday? December 3rd. December 2nd. December 2nd. And so, then the parade, the Christmas way. parade is the third. Yes. Now the change on that one is so we're ornament. going to be selling ornaments that you can purchase to put on the tree. And that funding will go back to play for scholarships for youth. And it will even make a more beautiful tree. That's awesome. Nice. So is, is there any money being set aside yeah, so we can put more ornaments. levels in that tree and it's make it grow? Tree. You know, we did plan on doing that, that, but there's so many other south. needs. We have decided to keep it just the way it is for now. Between the fireworks money that we raise and all the money that we need to run play so that we can give scholarships to kids that need it, we found that at some point we might, but it's not a high priority at this time. It's pretty expensive anyway. Extremely expensive. 24000 For the tree, how much for a layer? One that is one layer. Really? <laughs> you know, and part of the problem is Jim's done such a good job with all the trees out in front of City Hall. They're big and voluptuous, and then you have this big tree. Voluptuous? <laughs> I gotta go look They're at those full. trees. <laughs> Henry, stop! <laughs> so anyway, if you put that tree towards trees that aren't as big as those are surrounding it, it would make a big difference. It's, okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> no more comments. <laughs> <laughs> we won't say bye to you. Guarantee you'll have to.